The renewed conversation around the carbon tax has been the subject of fierce political debate, with the BC United and the BC Conservative Party saying that they would get rid of the tax if elected. And if you aren't sure where you stand this morning, we will be hearing from guests on both sides of the divide. And joining us now with more is Carson Binda, BC Director of the Canadian Taxpayers Federation. All right, Carson, thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks so much for having me. It's always a pleasure. Now, we know that your organization has been calling for the suspension of the carbon tax. Tell us why. Yeah, British Columbians are being slapped across the face with an outrageous cost of living right now. This winter, your average family across the province is going to be spending about $260 on the carbon tax on home heating alone. That's huge amounts of money when we already know that food banks across the province, across the country, are seeing record-breaking demand when normal people can't make ends meet. So by calling for a pause on the carbon tax on home heating, that would allow British Columbians to save a lot of money, which would go a huge way in solving the affordability crisis we're being hit with in BC right now. And so only on home heating, you don't think that it should be cut across the board? Well, so we would like to see the carbon tax axed completely. We don't think it works and we don't think British Columbians should be punished for driving their kids to hockey practice or heating their homes. But as momentum is building, we're seeing home heating becoming the topical issue that we need action on now. Like I said, this winter, your average family is going to be spending $260 on the carbon tax on home heating. Mm -hmm. It's wrong to punish families for staying warm this winter. And in, now the BC government would step in and say, well, um, low income and moderate income British Columbians are actually getting that money back in a tax credit. So does your argument still stand there? Absolutely. We know that the line that people get more than they uh, pay in the carbon tax is absolutely smoke and mirrors. So according to the parliamentary budget officer, average families in Canada are going to be out about $720 or up to $720 even after the rebates. That's doubly true for lower income families who we know are hit disproportionately hard by the carbon tax. So the rebates don't work. You don't give people more money than you take away by running that money through the bureaucracy and giving them a few crumbs mm -hmm. back. Now, we know that affordability is obviously a major topic, probably the number one topic affecting uh, British Columbians right now. But the climate emergency is as well. You know, we've had record wildfires over the summer. We're seeing, you know, the temperatures rise every summer as well. What would you like to see in its place in order to combat some of these uh, climate emergency problems that we're seeing? Yeah, that's a great question. The carbon tax, it's not a climate plan. It's a tax plan. We know, for example, from the Parliamentary Budget Officer that Canada's own emissions are not materially large enough to impact climate change. That means even if you waved a magic wand and Canada disappeared tomorrow, the world would still be uh, changing, climate would still be changing, because we only emit up to 2% at the very high-end estimates of global greenhouse gas emissions. But is that enough of an argument to say we, we, shouldn't, we shouldn't reduce our emissions? Well, so the carbon tax doesn't work to reduce reduce emissions. Um, gasoline, home heating fuels, those are very inelastic commodities. People need to heat their homes and leveling a carbon tax on home heating just makes it more expensive uh, for them to do that. Mm -hmm. People living in rural communities don't have an option other than driving to the grocery store, driving their kids to hockey practice in the evenings. So the carbon tax doesn't meaningfully reduce those emissions, it just punishes British Columbians for doing the necessities of life. Well, according to the province, they, they say that they've seen a 5 to 15 percent reduction in emissions through this carbon tax. Um, what would you think would be a more effective way of dealing with a climate emergency then? Yeah, we need to be working with our global partners to reduce emissions across the board. That 2 percent at the high-end estimates that Canada emits, it's a drop in the bucket compared to the big emitters globally like the United States, Russia, China, Brazil. So we need to be working closely with our international partners to get people off of things like solid fuels, things like coal, uh, wood, which we uh, know about 2 billion people, according to the World Health Organization, still rely on to heat their homes, to cook mm. their foods, to power their homes. All right. And that's a, a topic of discussion uh, around the world and especially at COP28 right now happening in Dubai. Uh, Carson, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much. It's always a pleasure.